Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, and I'm broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico, which is my new home. I have relocated, so I'm done with Los Angeles. I no longer live there. Uh, some people are asking me, when are you going back? Um, I'm not going back. I mean, I would go back to visit my family, but I'm not living in the U.S. any longer. Um, although U.S. is always home, and I have a lot of friends and family there, but uh, I'm immigrating to Mexico. Mexico is my new home, and I'm very happy here. I'd like to get your response uh, regarding... Uh, I'm thinking about have a, having a nine or 10 day retreat here in Tulum in this magical place. And I'd like to get your opinion of if I should do it in May, maybe it's too early, or wait till the summer's over and do it in the beginning of September. I also am thinking about doing another one during the new year. Uh, but first one I think I do in September, um, after the summer or mid-September. So uh, give me some feedback. What do you think? Are you willing to sit in a plane and come to this paradise and experience this place? Um, we would be doing some work from where we're going to be staying, which is going to be very exquisite. And then, then we will be visiting and doing the pyramids, the Mayan pyramids. We will go to the cenotes. Of course, we're going to spend time on the beach, meditate on the beach. It's really, the beach is sexy. It's just so yummy. I mean, whenever you go to the beach here, you just want to make love to it. Uh, I can't tell you how pretty it is. It's Caribbean water. So it's the white sand, pristine beaches with turquoise blue water. So I really would like all of you to come and visit me here. And, and we do some transmission. We dance on the beach. Uh, oh, well, we're going to have some fun. It's going to be powerful. So, um, so give me some feedback, if you please, and let me know what you think. Um, so maybe I do the first one in September, and then we go from there. All right. Uh, those of you on Facebook, I want to say hello to you. I uh, may not be looking at the camera very much because right now i'm broadcasting from the zoom on a, on my laptop and the facebook on my phone uh, until i have better internet and i can just broadcast uh, both zoom and facebook simultaneously from my computer um, so bear with me for another week so i get i get all my ducks in a row but for the moment, uh, just simply turn your attention inwards. Shift your attention. Just as if your mind is going to look inside. And look, turn the mind inwards. Sitting here. And turn very gently. In a very simple way, very swiftly, the best and easiest way of meditation is to simply turning your mind, turning your attention, not the mind, I'm sorry, turning your attention inwards and look for the source of your thoughts. Trace your thoughts back to where they come from. Where do they come from? Where do your thoughts come from? Turn your thoughts, turn your attention inwards into the source of your thoughts.
and trace them back. Just keep going back to see where they come from. Where do they originate? What's there before you think? What is there before thoughts come? And stay there. And now, this is not a mental activity. It's not a visualization practice. You're simply shifting your attention to the source of your thoughts. Where do they come from? What's there before you think? And Quite often, you arrive into silence. Quite often, you come to this place that it's very still and very quiet. And keep your attention simply there. Again, this is not a mental exercise. It's not thinking. It's not trying not to think. It's completely effortless. You simply shift your attention and you look inside instead of what you've been doing all of your life, looking outwards, now you're looking inwards. It's effortless. And then you come to this silence, this emptiness, this quiet place. And then maybe five minutes, two minutes from now, and another thought comes, and you get engaged with it. Simply follow that thought back to its source and go back and bring your attention to this place. It's very, very simple. It's very, very simple, but it's extremely potent and it works. And just simply stay in this place. Allow silence does its transmission of love, bliss, the oneness.
you are here in this moment and exercising your true nature. You are simply being, but you're not trying to be anything. You're not trying to get anywhere or accomplish anything. You're simply being present. You're simply here. You have tapped into the juice. The power of the being, the presence, the love, that which is here. And you are that. You are that. Just hang out here and allow here now to reveal its magic to you without any kind of agendas, without trying to accomplish anything. We are giving up our Western mentality of that we have to get somewhere or do something all the time to keep the mind engaged with distractions, to continuously condition ourselves and brainwash ourselves to deny ourselves from the magic of life and to look for it somewhere else. Denying what is already here. And in that denial, we deprive ourselves from the magic. Dive into the presence 
and allow yourself to be showered by the love of God, to be showered by the immense power of the presence. All transformations, all healing, all metamorphoses happen always in here, in now. The magic of life is here, right now. And what do you have to do to be here, right now? Nothing. You do not need to do anything to be here right now. Simply, we disconnect from our active mind and our deep conditioning of go, 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 and we stop. Even if it's for 5 or 10, 15 minutes, we stop. We stop all our programs and expectations. All of our achievements and our goals. 
everything stops. And in these few moments we're together, we're not trying to get anywhere. It's not even trying to meditate. It's completely goalless. There's no purpose here. We are not trying to accomplish anything or prove anything. We're simply stopping and taking a deep breath in this moment. And we're allowing the moment, the presence of now, to reveal itself. Maybe there is some magic in here and I've never stopped to check it out. I never took my time to see what's there. So let's see what's there. Is there something here? Is it possible that if I stop trying, even for a few moments, is it possible that maybe I encounter something beyond what I was imagining from not trying, from simply being. Or maybe not, maybe there's not. What do I have to lose? What can I lose? I cannot lose anything except a few moments of my life. Celebrating simply being here, your natural birthright.
Slowly, slowly come back. Now divert your attention back into your daily active awareness, consciousness. Coming back here again. to a different kind of presence. It's still being present, still being here, but now your senses, your attention has shifted to our conversation. So basically, it's a shift of the attention where your attention goes. Where do you put your, where the attention gets pulled to? The attention can be pulled into the pleasure of senses. Obviously, we all want to please our senses and have good experiences, naturally. Who doesn't want to have pleasant experiences? So that's the goal. Everybody wants to feel good and have a good time and enjoy whatever that means to you, to the person. So that's what we all want, naturally. Nobody's seeking sorrow or depression or pain consciously it does happen but you are not seeking it you're not going to go on a vacation spend five thousand dollars hoping you're going to have a horrible time if you go on a vacation you're going there hoping you're going to have a great time naturally so so our attention normally is on our senses. And we're projecting that our fortune and happiness is outside of here and outside of now. It happens constantly. It's kind of unconscious. It's a robotic reaction. We've been programmed, hypnotized, 
to be in that way. So what happens is quite often we miss this moment because this moment is not good enough and it gets replaced by an idea, a projection of a future moment that's going to be happy or it's going to be satisfactory, it's going to satisfy you that you have accomplished the goal you wanted and that's going to be in future. But of course, you never get to it because as you get closer to the deadline, then the mind creates another project to delay you and to keep dragging you into the future moments, to deny you from what is right now. So we go through a lifetime of missing the magic because the magic is here in this moment. That's where it is. Missing out on what is here right now in this moment. So it's shift of attention. Where does your attention go? This morning before I came here, I was invited by a new friend to breakfast. So I went to this place where we're having breakfast together. And uh, one table down from us, there was a man with three phones. And, and he had his phone on, uh, they were on, so you could hear this ding. Every time he got a message, there was like, ding, ding. And then at one point, it got too much. It was like every 10 seconds, there was a ding. So I got up and walked up to his table, and I said, excuse me, sir, because it became very annoying for me. But it didn't look like it was annoying anybody else because nobody else was saying anything, but my attention went to the ding. I keep hearing this ding. And then all of a sudden, I can't enjoy the breakfast anymore because I'm just focused on this phone and the noise I hear. So finally, I decided I walk up to him and I ask him to turn it off. It's, it's annoying. It's bothering. Bothering me. And when I came back and sat down, two other people looked at me and they went like this. Like, thank you. So, so it's, it's, a very, it's very interesting because, okay, that's what happened. What happened was my attention went into the phone and, and the, the bell that it was, the sound was coming out of it and, and I'm focused on it. Now I can't take my focus off of it. And it's bugging me. Now, may you may be sitting in a coffee shop and talking to a friend of yours and you're in a heated conversation and there are cars driving on the street and you're not paying any attention to the street's noise. The noise is in the background and you're not paying any attention to it. The noise is still there, but your attention is not on it. So you don't hear it. Your attention is on the person you're speaking to. But then if somebody kind of taps on your shoulder and says, isn't, isn't outside really loud? Don't you think it's annoying hearing all these cars and bells and horns and everything? And now maybe your attention goes in that direction and then it becomes annoying for you. Or before you weren't, your attention wasn't there. So what I'm saying is basically that's what I'm talking about is that 
where does your attention go to? Right now, for a lot of people around the world, the media is trying to grab your attention and direct your consciousness, your awareness on a fear, worry, and anxiety. And if you give it a lot of importance and keep following the news, then you're gonna be in fear, worry, and anxiety, naturally, because that's what they're pumping in the air. So you're gonna be full of fear, worry, and anxiety. And if you bring your attention into, let's say, you like classical music, and you're listening to classical music every day, you're following different artists, different bands around the world, and you're just checking things out online, you see where they are, if they're gonna have an online concert, who's the leaders in classical music around the world, uh, what's new, so then your attention is there. That's what your, your main attention is. That becomes your reality. That becomes your world. You're not manifesting. You're not visualizing. It's just your attention here. And it went to another thing. Then you meet a man or a woman and they captivate you and you're having this romantic relationship with them. And you're, we call it fall in love. And all you're thinking about is him or her. What is he doing now? Where is he? Is he thinking about me? When is he going to contact me? Did I get a text message from him? Oh, I'm going to see him tonight. Oh, I'm going to get dressed for him and get myself ready. So now you're really excited and your attention is on this person, he, she, or whatever. Similarly, what I'm saying is if you shift your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts, not having your attention on your thoughts, the content, what am I thinking about? I shouldn't be thinking about these things. I should be thinking about this. I shouldn't be saying these words. I should be saying those words. I need to say positive stuff. I need to think positively. So then your mind becomes your attention and you are constantly in engagement with your thoughts. And that becomes a reality, your moment to moment daily reality. And as a result, you will suffer because you're gonna be having the disease suffering from the disease that most human beings on this planet are suffering from, a busy mind. You understand? Does this make sense? If you, your attention is on your thoughts all the time, then you have to suffer. You don't have a choice because your mind is going to be crazy. Your mind is not going to be kind to you. It will be a horrible slave master. It will take you to all kinds of dark places. What's going to happen to me? What's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen to the world? What's going to happen to the economy? Am I going to die from COVID? Is everyone going to die from COVID? What's, is, when, is, when is life going to go back to normal? When are we going to be able to do this or that? The mind is going to go to all kinds of dark places. Because the theme 
which is in the air, is a dark theme. You're watching a horror movie. It's not a loving comedy. It's a horror movie that your, your attention goes on a horror movie. It's Friday the 13th. And Godzilla is coming to take care of you. So what I'm suggesting is, if you can, bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts. Where do they come from? Before they arise, what's there? As you put your attention in that direction, all of a sudden, you are quiet and you begin to feel the bliss. You begin to experience what you have been born with. It's your natural birthright. You were born in this moment. And your being resides here in this moment. So when your attention goes into inner silence and you start paying attention, peace, joy, love appears in your life. Your mind becomes quiet and your heart opens up and you feel the presence, you tap into the holiness, the juice, the unified field of the oneness, of harmony, of love, here in this moment, because that's where it exists. It's not in your future life. It's not in the past lives. It's not in another civilization. It's not in Atlantis or Lumeria or somewhere else. The kingdom of heaven is here. But, not, but very few people are able to be here. That's why there's a story sold to you and the story was that if you're a good girl and you do everything or a good boy and you do everything right, when you die, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to Valhalla, as the Vikings called it. You're going to go to heaven where everything is rosy. And if you're not a good boy or you're not a good girl and you haven't done the right things, you've been a bad person, and then you go to hell. You're going to be suffering for the eternity. That was a story that has been sold to us in past 2,000 years. 2,500 years, whatever years. And it's a story. Now I'm going to tell you another story. Tell me what do you think about this one? When you die, you're going to go to this chamber, this place. And this place is that all the angels are there. You're going through light. You go through a tunnel. And you arrive at this place. And it's all an angelic realm. And in this angelic realm, you have, you, re, you reunite with all the people you knew that died before you. And then, according to where you're at, if you need any more purification, then you come back and reincarnate in this world, physical world, and you live another life. How's that story? 
Which story do you like better? You like the first story or the second story? The second story? The second story sounds better, doesn't it? Okay. Now, let's have another story. How's that? Can we add another story to this? Do you think we can add, we can have another version? Yeah? Can someone come up with a new one? Okay, there's another story. When you die and you go to this other place, this holding area, then you need to meet and come across all of your ancestors. And you have to sort of pay for their deeds. If they did something really bad, now you have to go encounter them because in this new chamber, God wants you to clear all your ancestry karma. So you're gonna go have to pay for them. And once you clear that up, then you're allowed from there to go into this other place that you have to do another series of things. So anyway, I'm just making this up, by the way. But this story keeps going and going and going. And this is the stories that we play in our head. We play different stories and a lot of different script, spiritual scriptures or practices, they have a story for you about what's going to happen after you die, or where you're going to go, you're going to come back, or you're not, or maybe after you die because you evolved, you're allowed to go to another class of civilization, and maybe you go and have another life as in the ethereal world, you don't come up with a physical body, Maybe you go to this other dimension that everybody's 10 feet tall and they're made out of light and they body, they don't have a body so they never get sick. Whatever it is, there's all kinds of different things. I personally enjoy here right now. Personally, I would not exchange here with anything else. With any kind of promissory note of future or another time or anything else. Because I somehow, through the grace, came to understand that the kingdom of heaven and the hell simultaneously existing here in this world, in this life. But it becomes hell when my attention is on my thoughts that drags me out of here into another place or another time. And it is heaven when I'm simply here. And no matter how dull or boring here can look, because here sometimes can be boring. And naturally, the mind would like to project into another place or future to drag you out of here with a promissory note that it would be better. How many times you've done that to yourself or right now you're doing it to yourself? 
how many years have you lived that you have played this game with yourself? Here is never good. Now is not good. And it's somewhere else. Or some other time. And what happens is you miss. You miss now. You miss here. And the lifetime goes by. And sometimes for some of us, if we're lucky, somehow through the grace, the grace comes and fishes us out from the world of ignorance, from being lost. So this is my suggestion, is practice your natural state of being which actually doesn't require any practice because that's how, who you are, by learning or refusing or disengaging your, yourself from going anywhere else or projecting that your happiness is going to be somewhere else or some other time. And bring your attention here, hang out here. Let's examine here. Have you ever tried? Have you ever given it a try? A fair try. Of simply being here. I know you do it when we're together because the field is very powerful and sucks you in. I know that for a lot of you, because we've been together for a number of years and we've seen each other and we've done work together and, and you speak to me, I know. But you tell me when you're with me and you come to the academy, this happens for you. And I'm telling you that without coming to me and without coming to the academy, that is your true nature. You have already got it inside and around you. It's here. The reason you don't tap into it on a normal basis is because you don't recognize it and you don't believe it. You think because of the conditioning that we have, it's somewhere else with someone else. You don't recognize that every time in your life you've been happy, every time you've been in a blissful state, every time that, and that can happen every day, and everyone has experienced it. Don't take me wrong. This is not just spiritual people. Every single human being on this planet, they have moments that they feel blissed out. Because in those moments, they're here and present. But they're projecting it on getting a good news, that they got something, they got the object of their desire, and finally they got what they wanted, and now they feel amazing. It's not that. It's because somehow... You disengage from anything else, anywhere else, and your attention comes towards your own self, and you're here. And all of a sudden, you, the expansion happens, because now you got the object of your desire, and now you say, oh, okay, wow, I got it. I finally got her. I finally got him. I finally got the house. I finally got the contract. I finally got... Now you chill out. And in that chilling out, what happens is the field expands, the space opens up, 
and your mind's not engaged with trying to go anywhere, even if it's for one hour, for a half an hour, for one day, one night, finally, he, you and him reunited. Finally, you saw your children. Finally, you're, you got the house, you got the contract, you got whatever. Finally, you got what you wanted. Or you arrive in the vacation place. Now you're just letting go and you're relaxing. And then that space opens. You shift from your head to your heart and love appears and you feel bliss. But this bliss is always here. And it's unconditional. However, in your mind, you've been programmed to believe that it's conditioned. It's subject to something going your way. But I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with things going your way or not going your way. It's always here because I experience it all the time. And I have not a holy man to get to it. I didn't do things correctly. I wasn't vegetarian. I had sex. I did drugs. I booze. I didn't do all the things that all typical meditators and seekers of the truth do. I didn't do any of those things. I did a little bit here and there, but I broke all the rules and I came to this. So it's not even following the rules or not. I'm being as honest as I can be with you. It has nothing to do with being vegetarian or doing yoga or not. It's simply learning or unconditioning from this madness that you're involved with, that you think it's normal because you always have to worry. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm worried about what's going to happen. I'm worried about... Well, number one is you worried about yourself. It's the number, your number one worry is the, the fear of death. You're worried that you're going to die. That's number one. That's the number one thing. Everything else is after that. No, I'm worried about my kids. No, no, no. You're worried about yourself first. You're, you're afraid of death. And based on that fear, everything else comes. And then you're worried about lack of self-control because you're worried about what's going to happen in the world. You're not worried about what's going to happen in the world. Your worry down deep is because you can't control it. You thought you had, you want to know what's going to happen because it gives you a sense of control so you can navigate in this. So you see, you gotta get really honest with yourself and really look, most people are not even, they're not even aware of it. And it's so unconscious, it's so much, so deeply rooted into our awareness, consciousness, the fear, and the control, because you want to control. I'm really worried about my kids. No, you're not worried about your kids. That's not the number one thing. You are worried about you. Because something happens to your kids, you're worried that you're going to suffer. Not because they died. That's because you're suffering. Your quality of life's going to change. And you're going to mourn. It's you who you're worried about. But that you you're worried about 
doesn't have any control. Can't control things. But you know, I just like things to go back to normal. Yeah, you like it to go back to normal because you had an idea, you thought you knew what's going to happen. And now you don't have a clue what's going to happen. But you didn't have a clue what was going to happen then either. You thought you did. But you didn't. You didn't. But since it was monotone and it was on a system that you thought everything's going to be the same, like our conditioning, like look how you react when it comes to Christmas, before Christmas, like a robot. It's coming to the holidays. Ah, oh, holidays! Christmas lights, da 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 da, family dinner, la 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 la. Oh, Easter, da, 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 da. it's a robot. It's a robot reacting to an input and there's an output. You're not thinking for yourself. Someone else is thinking for you. Because if you think for yourself, you may not do anything of the, any of this stuff. If we thought for ourselves, you would never go to the church and confess. Confession to the priest for your sins. What kind of stupid thing is that? If you're going to think, okay, you got this mind, and all right, since you got this mind, if you can't stop it, at least use it. Can you think for yourself? Can you use the brain? At least you got it, right? And you say, I can't stop it. Okay, at least use it. Do something with it. Would you, do you have to believe whatever they write in the newspaper and they tell you in TV, can you use your mind that they're lying to you or they're bullshitting or they made up a story or there's nothing? Can you use it? Put two and two together and come to some conclusions? Can you use your mind to think that why am I afraid? Because I may die, why am I afraid of death? Uh, I don't know. What's going to happen if you die? Uh, I heard this story of I go into a dark abyss. I mean, what's going to happen to you? Why are you so afraid of death? So you can be so controlled easily. But why am I celebrating Christmas? Why am I celebrating this day? Why when somebody dies, I have to wear black? Why don't I wear white? To cheer up everyone else. Why do I have to do everything everyone else does? Why do I have to get married and have kids? Why do I have to do all these things other people do. Can you use your mind and question things, please? Since you got this mind. Or are you just going to be a robot? Ah, it's very depressed. It's so depressing. Ah. Every time I talk to my family, they're worried. They're depressed. The world is in chaos. The world's going to end. Everything's bad. Everything's dark. Zarathustra, you're too loose. You're too renegade. It's going to catch up with you. Cool. When it catches up with me, I'm just going to have to deal with it. 
But I rather die once than die every day. But look at, pay attention. You're dying every day. Every time you turn on the TV and watch COVID news, you die. Die one time. Don't die every day. But until you die, live your life in here and now. Live it now, in this moment. Be here. Don't be somewhere else. Here. And check out here. See what's here. Maybe you discover something you never knew it exists. Magic of life is happening here. Candace, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go to the subject you asked me to talk about. It just went in another direction, and that is a part of the script. Something else was written. So, Mr. Amir, I have to give you a different topic. I don't know if you're there or you're listening, but I have to change. So, what should we change the topic of this week to? Anybody can tell me what I was talking about? Someone? Can someone unmute yourself and tell me what I was talking about? What was, what, what was the topic of the day? I want to know if you've been listening or not. Did I hypnotize you or put you to sleep? Be, being in the moment. Being here now. Who is this? Who's Candace. Talking? Hi, Candace. Hi. So, so what are we going to say? That's what you were talking about, right? Being present. Yeah, the magic of the moment. Yeah, there you go. Okay, we're gonna call it that. <laughs> Amir, are you there? All right, so later on I have to say the topic of the day was what time is it? What is, one hour and 18 minutes. Yeah, the topic of the day is the magic of the moment. So we're going to have to put that edited. I want to <laughs> see, this is what happens when you're in a moment because, and you don't have an agenda. I sincerely was going to talk about the script, but then I opened my mouth and something else happens. So what I'm talking about is life is happening spontaneously. You may have an agenda in life that you need to get to here and do that. But then existence has its own agenda. And since life is bigger than you and I, you end up doing what life wants you to do. All right, so there's a couple of ways you can connect with me here. Is either you're gonna write something to me on the chat box and or if you want to unmute yourself and ask me a question, I'll be more than happy to answer it to the best of my ability. Anybody? Okay. Hi, Mina. Nice having you here today. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Yeah. How's it going, Hamar? Are you still living there? Uh, uh, not in Hamar, but 30 minutes away. 10 minutes from Hilda. Okay. Right. It's fine here. The snow is melting. Starting to be a little green around. 
Right, we're we're in March, so yeah. Hopefully by next month it will warm up a bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you you're all gonna have to visit, come to Tulum, for for another retreat. Huh. <laughs> well, nice, nice seeing you again. You too. Okay. Um, uh, Samuel from uh, Facebook. I can't internet. I can't interact with you verbally on Facebook. So if you want to talk to me, the best is to sign up and come on uh, on Zoom. And you can go through my website, which is zaratustra.tv, and uh, you can do it next week. Um, join us here on, on Zoom, and we can talk. So, let's see if there's any other questions. Hi, Cecilia. Nice seeing you. Hi, brother. Hi, Zarustra. You're doing a good job. How's it going? You're you're muted. Mute. Okay. Um, now, how about now? You're good now. Okay. Uh, can you expand a little more on how to remain in that moment of power and presence and magic as we described it today? Uh, all of us here undoubtedly experience that or that state. How many yeah. of us can remain in it other than yourself, which you have said uh, Happily, you do. Um, so, can you reflect on that a bit? How we get to your stage, perhaps, or our own best stage, or simply to is right. it getting back to the moment? Is it breathing? It's obviously presence. It's many things, but you know, I leave it to you. Sure. Thank you. That's a great question. I appreciate it. The we're conditioned not to be here by, from childhood. As we get older, we get schooled and we get food. So to activate our minds and getting sucked out of this moment by continuously being reminded that we need to be mindful of our future. Yes. Because when you're a kid, and as you observe any children, they're all playing and they are here. No, none of the kids are thinking about the future or 10 years from now or investments or things like that. So now we're adults and we're in this situation and we, get com we come to the light. We're coming back home and we basically are seeking inner peace. <clears throat> we're looking for happiness. Or we're looking for something to free us from the misery that we may get into. And that misery is basically the mind, our thoughts, our fears, our worries, whether it's emotions or thoughts or whatever's happening to the body. And we, it gets our attention. So how can I free myself from this? Because I'm suffering. But suffering means that here and now is not good enough. And I don't know how to connect with it. And things should be different. I should be somewhere dif different. 
with somebody different and existence has not given me what I want. I'm not getting what I want. So basically when the attention comes, the shift starts to happen that we're capable of shifting the attention, bringing the attention to a different part of ourselves. And that part of ourselves is, is the presence. There is, there is a huge mighty presence of an energy field or higher self, God, whatever name I want to put into it, is here. And intelligence, it's always here. And this part of us, its presence is not conditional. It's always here. And this part also, it hasn't been born and it's not going to die. It doesn't have time limitations. So as the attention shifts and we recognize or get the glimpse, glimpses of something here not changing, it wasn't born, it won't die, something here is always present. And as our attention, as we start to notice it, whether your teacher is telling you or you read something about it or you had spontaneous awakening, in recognition of that which is always here. The attention starts to move in that direction. And you begin to touch this place. And this place, its beauty, is, its magic is when you, you disengage from the world of the thoughts. Because the world of the thoughts is objects that are coming and going. There are thoughts traveling all the time in your mind, emotions coming and going all the time. And there is this part which is present and not moving, not coming and going, is aware of these elements. Those elements cannot bring you any happiness. They just bring misery or the happiness that comes through the emotions is always momentarily and it's temporary. But as the attention shifts towards that which is always here, that which is present and non-changing, you touch that other part of yourself, which is almighty, it's much bigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by noticing that part and sort of disengaging from the thoughts of not buying, you may not be able to stop your mind, but you're able to recognize that there is a stream of thoughts going through your head all the time. And this is not going to bring you any comfort. And this gets stimulated by the bad news, by the world news. It gets a lot, it gets more activated. So as you disconnect from whatever stimulates your mind and your emotions, which mainly the news or getting into conversations with other people about the world or eating better food that it's not gonna really hype you up with a lot of junk food with the sugar up and down. So you're, you're cleansing, you're getting away from the toxic stuff and your attention is going towards this other part of yourself. You start to touch it. And, and this part is here, it's always here. The reason that we're not really tapping into it because we're the ones who is not here. We're too much in our heads. So you're disconnecting from the toxins and the busy mind. And then you're discovering this other part of you, which is really still 
it's quiet, you call it inner peace, it's still, you're experiencing love. And the more you start to connect with it, notice this part, means the less you are in your mind, the more it begins to take over your life. Uh, because, may I ask a, may I ask yeah, a question sure. there? Please, please. Um, clearly, uh, uh, for me, and I'm sure for all of us here, we can touch that very easily in meditation or in a quiet moments, et cetera, et cetera. We wouldn't be sitting here today. Um, the real challenge is not so much when we're looking at TV and the great parade of things out there, but we're dealing with our personal life and real situations that we have to engage in, you know, that may not be beyond certain futures or, uh, you know, COVID or whatever it might be that impacts neg negative things, is to be able to retain uh, that presence and awareness at a deep level. Clearly, we go in and out of it, but, uh, you know, right through, so... Okay. I guess it's the same way, but you know, it's it's if you didn't have to, um, I guess if you were in a like a monastery or something, when things were done for you all around you, then you had the the uh, opportunity to spend that, all your time that engaging. A, that's a story your mind tells you. Okay. True. Yeah, because you are in a monastery right now, actually. You're just not aware. Okay. Most most of people in the world, they're in a solitary monastery right now. They're not allowed to go out. They can't go socialize. They can't go to a bar drinking. You can't go to restaurants. Mm -hmm. You can't have mm -hmm. parties. You mostly, it's like shut up and stay home. Yeah. So we're not aware that we are in a monastery now or being stuck into the situation of marriage, kids. You got, you, you know, you may be in this marriage you don't like to be in. You may have a couple kids that you have to take care of and they're torturing you. Or whatever situation people are in, it is a lot of times if you expand your vision and start to realize it is a monastery. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the only salvation in this place is to manage your mind, to be able to rise above the mind and not buy into it because the mind wants to drive you crazy. Yeah. You're going to come up with all kinds of stories. So you dis disengage from the stories that the mind creating and you come back to the source. So every time you come back to the source, expansion reveals itself. It opens up again. So yes, it requires practice. And what is the practice? The practice is to disengage from the old habit. Right, right. You don't have to practice to be here and now because that's your very natural state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the recognition of a lifetime conditioning of getting sucked into anywhere but here. Because every time you examine it, let's say examine here, in this moment. Let's examine like, what is happening in this moment right now? This moment independent from previous moments and future moments. There's no previous moments, there is no future moments. There's always this moment. Yeah? Is there any other moment outside of here? Mm -hmm. the, the previous moments are memories. They're in your mind. You remember what happened an hour ago, but there's no solid, there's no proof of it. You cannot prove it. Mm -hmm. 
If you know this is this broadcast is getting videoed, is getting recorded. But before the, this broadcast, show me two hours ago. Where is it? So it's a non-existing thing. It doesn't exist. And two hours from now, where is it? So when you come to two hours from now, you come to it from now. It's here. It's like the time is passing by you. You're not going through time. The time is going through you. Right, right. So it's always now. It's like be here now. Uh, Ram Dass's famous yeah. book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, we here now. So let's examine now. Let's see if there is something's wrong in now. Okay, all of us together collectively. Let's check it out. What is happening now in your life in this moment? So check it out. Just take a look. And when you come back to now, are you hungry? Do you have lack of food? Is rain falling on your head? Is someone there beating you up? And now, right now, is there like anything missing? So you get into the habit of checking in with yourself. See, check in with yourself. Okay, I'm here right now. Examine. If someone's about to kill me or rape me, no, nobody's in my apartment. Okay, am I hungry? Is there? Am I going to die from starvation? No, I have food in my fridge and I'm not hungry. Okay, is there like bombs falling on my head or rain is falling on my head? No, I got a roof and I got a bed and a house. I got electricity, I got water. Examine right now. You get in a habit of bringing yourself back here yeah, yeah. and examining it. And you see like, yeah, right now, everything is perfect. Is everything perfect in the world? No. Is everything perfect or it's been perfect in your past? No. But right now you come back here and you just examine and you say, without, if I disconnect from anything to the future and anything in the past and I examine it and then everything is fine. Then you can get into this habit of saying, okay, Zarathustra, come back. Everything's fine. I got enough money in the bank for, for now. I can eat today. And this is the only time I have. And I don't know if I'm gonna be alive tomorrow. So you come back. You come back here and you relax into this moment. You relax into it for a few seconds. You just chill in it. Ah, oh, okay. I can relax. And then a natural phenomena, because it's your nature, opens. Oh, you know, I want to read a book. Or I want to watch a Netflix movie or I want to write, or I want to sing, or I want to paint, or whatever. Space opens. And you feel the love. If you go in your head and make it conditional that, yeah, I have to live in Tulum or Caribbean or somewhere in order to be happy, then you're in trouble. So we can use this pandemic as an opportunity to work on ourselves because for the first time for a lot of us in our lives, you are limited into interaction. 
you're limited in distractions. So somehow existence has forced us, or most of us, to be in this situation. Force majeure. Okay, now that I'm forced in this situation, how can I turn in from a poison to the medicine? How can I take advantage of a situation that I think it's been forced on me? I think. Okay, now I'm in this situation. Existence has put me in this thing. Now, hey, maybe next year the whole humanity is wiped out. Okay, so fucking what? Far out. I prefer the whole humanity ends because we're all going to be together. Because I don't want to be here as a single person and everybody else is dead. It's not fun. If everyone's going to die, I want to go with them. I don't want to be here. So what am I going to do with this month that I have? I'm going to do everything I wanted to do because I only have one month. But now, forget about the month. What am I going to do right now in this moment? So let's use this opportunity to learn how to be here. Since you're forced, you can't go out and the mind cannot get distracted with external distractions, I can say I am in a Tibetan monastery in Tibet and my job is to be here. This is what I'm doing. And I'm going to use this opportunity of the pandemic towards my advantage. I voluntarily are going to practice every day being present. And I voluntarily are going to disconnect from the world of thoughts. So then you start to work on yourself. And the more you do it, boom, the more the juice, the presence is going to pour blessings in you. So you have no idea. A week, two, or three weeks go by, and you're just constantly finding yourself in these blissful, three-hour blissful, blissed-out stretches that actually you don't want pandemic to end. Because if it ends, you're just going to be out there interacting with other people, and you're kind of like, you know what, I kind of really like this. I wanted to continue because now it's giving me a chance to dive into the love of self. Mm -hmm. So that's why I share with everyone, we're in a place in our time that is extremely unique. And actually, this is the time that transformation is going to pl take place. Because all of my major transformations in my life were either near-death experiences or I was heartbroken, a woman broke, or a girl, a woman broke my heart, or someone close to me died, or I lost everything, and it forced me into growth. It forced me to do more inner work and dig inside. And I'm grateful to all those events. I've never been a victim. Even if I was tortured in a political prison, I don't consider myself a victim. It was a blessing from God. I had to go through that to learn and to grow and evolve to the next level. 
That was a wonderful question. I hoped I was able to answer it. Yes, thank you very much. That was very, very helpful. And uh, the details you gave as well uh, helped to, to yeah. ground it, right. you know, in, in the self and in, in the being in the eternity. So thank you. You're welcome. You're doing a good job, my dear. Thank you. Hang in there. Mm -hmm. Hang in there. It's easy to get stuck into the story. It's very easy to forget that the trust of trusting the boss, the one who created the universe. Let the creator take care of the creation. And we are children of God. Some intelligence brought us into this world and we are its, its responsibility. Let the one who has brought us into this world take care of us. We don't need to worry about that. Let's recognize the presence of this intelligence in our lives. Because maybe it's trying to get your attention. Now, we don't like the word God because we're all connecting the word God with some dude with white beard and white hair and with a stick who every time you talk about the word sex wants to punish you. Okay, let's not use the word God. Let's use the word consciousness. Her Majesty, the Supreme. But something, a bigger intelligent presence is running the show, is making this planet turn around itself. It makes this planet to turn around the planet sun. It makes day to night, night to day. It makes all these trees to go in hibernation and then wake up in the spring. It runs all these systems in my body, there, there is an intelligence here. We can't say it doesn't exist. And I'm all alone here. And what's going to happen to me with COVID and the life world is going to end? No. No. That's not it. This intelligence is above the COVID and above anyone who created it. It's the will of the Allah. It's the will of God. It's the will of the source that disease exists. Virus survives. Without the will of that which created the world, Nothing can be here. So if existence has created this, let's broaden our, our view. Let's not be like this. Let's open up. That which created this virus is created you, created me, and created everything else. We as single individuals are powerless. But when we recognize our own soul and where we come from, then we're extremely powerful. Right now, most of us on this planet have forgotten who we are, have forgotten where we come from, and what we're made out of. Let's remember who we are. We do come from the land of love. We all come from the great spirit. It's one spirit lives through every being on this planet. There is no living spirit on this planet that's outside of consciousness, whether it's good or it's bad. 
as if there is electricity, there is bad electricity. Have you ever heard of that? Bad electricity? Same electricity that is turning the refrigerator in my house, powering my computer, turning the light here. I can use the air conditioning. It's the same electricity you're using. It's no different electricity. Let's say you live in Amsterdam. The queen of Netherlands uses the same electricity. The prime minister uses the same electricity. And anyone who lives in Amsterdam uses the same electricity. There's no good electricity or bad electricity. It's electricity. Same thing. It's one spirit living through all beings in the universe. Let's remember that. We forget this. We forget our origin and we forget where we come from and who's in charge. Remember who's in charge and trust in that, that every, each and every one of us is like a little baby and our the Her Majesty, the Supreme, is carrying you like a little baby. We're just babies. Our consciousness is, hasn't expanded. It's an infancy level. That's why we don't see the big picture. But we're carried by Mama. My Papa is carrying us. You're in good hands. We don't need to go into fear. You gotta remember every time, remind yourself, come back here. That's why coming back here is the way home. Because when you come back here, you realize all is well. When you're not here and you go into the world of the mind, then it's so frightening. Yeah, comprende? Oh, yeah, got it? That's why we come back here. That's the goal of the academy, the 5D academy of higher consciousness, to come back here again to remember who we are. We're not all helpless victims. That we're like sheep, scared. When am I going to be slaughtered next? You have God in you. And the force of love in your heart. And yes, this is a challenge, but it's spiritual challenge. We're being challenged to dig deep inside ourselves, to search for the source of our being. That's why this is happening. Not out of malice intention. Okay? It's nice to see you all. I love you. Thank you for being here with me. All is well. All is well. The boss is taking care of everything. There's nothing to fear. When you come back to the heart and you come back here, you realize there is no room for fear. Only when you forget being here and forget who you are, you identify with an object, an object that's going to perish one day. Yes, all objects come and go. One day, this body is going to die. When? We don't know. 
Well, we know it will, because there is no object that lasts forever. But I'm not the object. I'm the awareness of it. So if I identify with it, yes, it's very scary. But if I remember who I am, then freedom, freedom appears again. And love comes back in my life. Okay, so my website is zaratustra.tv. Um, I don't have any public events yet. I'm working on it. Once I get my studio going, I will make an announcement. Um, what I have to offer is a private training program. It's called Life Training Program. And I have room for one student um, that I can take. It's a three month tailor-made program designed to help you to reach your spiritual goals. So if you're interested, uh, contact me, write an email to me. Uh, my email is info at zaratustra.tv. It's on my website. And uh, we make an appointment. Uh, it's a free consultation. And I will talk to you and we go through your needs and goals, and, uh, and we go on from there. And I'll tell you how much it costs. Um, other than that, this, pot, this broadcast is going to be on my podcast, Zaratustra 5D, YouTube channel, Zaratustra 5D, Facebook, Zaratustra 5D, and Twitter and Instagram, all Zaratustra 5D. Those of you who have signed up with us through Zoom, we have your email and we will send you a copy of the podcast and a copy of our recording. Otherwise, you can watch it on YouTube. Feel free to write to me. Um, my email is info at zaratustra.tv. I appreciate your support on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for your comments and love, um, your presence. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, if you do talk to other members, please let them know that we've changed the time. And from now on, our broadcast, it's on the time of the Eastern, East of US. It's like the New York time. It's gonna be from 12 to two, California is 9 to 11, and most Scandinavia is from 18 to 20. I know London is uh, one hour ahead, so just check your time, time difference, um, same time as New York City. So you can always check to see what time is it in New York. I'm following the same time. Thank you very much. God bless you. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Namaste.